Hey, man, if you missed me, Jinx, welcome back to the Boogeyman. We are back. Okay, so Sophie just got saved, so she's alive. So that's a check. We're back at the footsteps. So we need to get over this wall. David, let me ask a favor. Hey, David, let me stand on your head so I can get over this wall. Okay, so we came here before, and things generally go practically normal all the way to the end. However, there is a final last step for the climate of the good ending. So we must go all the way, all the way. We can look up here. Small door and ceiling. Here we were before. Really? Oh, no, the cell phone. I forget every time. So this is where Helena came through. Isn't this? Yeah, it is. He's pulling it together. So Helena was out here at some point. Oh wait, that's the final thing. That's the last thing we need to do. In here. Okay, so we've been here before. On the balls of paper. Dick Anderson, age 39, job assistant, police inspector, Bobby slash murder division, wife, family, his wife, and two kids. The rest have been torn off. Dick? Footsteps! Hide! I guess we'll hide here. God, can you move a bit faster, please? Oh, maybe, maybe. Turn it off. Aye. Ah! Get him, Dave. Keith. Don't move. You're under arrest. <laughs> Sorry. I like David as a protagonist. Sue me. Get him, Keith. <laughs> Shut up, criminal. Uh, your wifey's got a good butt on her. The really hell? makes me want to chase after her. What the heck, man? Punch him. Where is she? Oh, I guess I can ask some questions. Where? Where? Ah, oh, detective. How careless. Put him in the arm lock. Trying to take me on in such close quarters. Okay, see, look at those nails. Look at those nails. Good luck convincing me he's human. <laughs> like, god damn. Oh dear, he face planted the ground. I hate to say such a rude thing to a detective, but not really. Damn, I guess. Dummy. Wow. You okay there, Keith? Keith? The footsteps. Oh, hi. Jesus, Helena's jump scaring Keith, us. My poor darling. Yeah, can we talk? You watched me as I wallowed in the depths of despair. Uh, Helena, aren't you talking? Why is the question mark? And there you stood, with your back against the edge. What? Now, it's time that you finally learn. What? You need pride. You need peace. Right. So go ahead. Take it all. What? But don't you see? In the end, there will be nothing. What? Left of you. Oh. So what?
Wow, okay, well, the guy had a funny sense of humour saying if you cut all the previous requirements, this scene goes better. Hmm, remind me how, get Uh, remind me how exactly that was better. Okay, is there anything in this room? I feel like there's something to pick up. Not in this room, then? The red writing on the floor. Shocker. I'm paranoid by footsteps. Oh. There's a scrap paper and an IC recorder. Something scribbled on the paper. You just want to hear her? Uh, where is this? Oh, this one's muffled in the background. Who are you? What's going on? Hello, Miss Baring. Who? Yeah, who's the guy in the background? Call me Boogie, ma'am. No. I'm about to begin a game befitting such a joyful night. I'd appreciate your participation as well. No. Run from me, miss. I'm sorry. I... I don't know what you mean. At least she's up front and honest. Jeez. Where's my husband? <laughs> so Where am I? Up. Why is that man tied up? Uh, I knew it, but god damn it. Ah, he's an assistant. He can quickly explain to you how this will all work. He's gonna be like, if you don't listen, stab. You become this guy. That kind of thing. If I should catch you, oh, is. this happens. Stab. Oh. Understand the rules now? Where's my husband? <laughs> oh, hell no, you're so brave. Somewhere you wouldn't know about. Is he in the castle? Well, then I do know about it. Where's my husband? Oh. He can't save you. He's in my grasp. It's up to me if he lives or dies. Now it's up to me if he lives or dies through my terrible actions. Now run, Miss Bayring. The game begins, and I am it. Spooky. Aww. So... I was on the inside of the cell. Oh. Oh, okay. We don't get to pick it up? That's it? Right. Hey, David. What up? Thanks for the letter. Keith, did something happen? Yes. That big head knocked me out cold. What? No wonder you took so long. Are you okay? I could have died easily. But more importantly... <laughs> I'm going to use that now... Often, when people say, ask me okay, I could, I'm gonna be like, I could have died easily. But, more importantly, I'm right here. No. Forget it. I picture it as like, you're getting late to school or something, they're like, are you okay? And you're like, I could have died, but traffic was hell. But I'm here now. Alrighty, so we, now we need to get David kidnapped so that we can save him, so that he can be alive for the ending, and then we'll get happy, happy, happy ending. So I should have locked us in for only the good ending. Which is really nice to hear. We're putting so much, quite a bit of work to get this ending. I'm hoping it'll be worth it. K Keith, are you going in there? So this is what we missed last time. Can't I? <laughs> Can I not? Well, uh... So have you just got attacked by dogs? Let me go inside. Don't tell me you're afraid. This is... When I was a kid, this wild dog chased me around for like an hour. You're such a big guy, you're really a whip. And that's the end of that conversation. Nicely done, boys. I'm so proud of you. Constantly having a go at each other. Okay, the conversation is exactly the same as was before, so I just skipped it. And so... <laughs> God. What a horrible, horrible painting. <sighs> Ugh. Don't get what he says there. Keith.
Thank you, David. So we're gonna go down the secret passages like before. And then there's a room here. The number lock, which we could never figure out. So hopefully we'll be able to do it this time. It's locked. Great. So this was supposed to give us a thing, but it did not. Isn't like being in limbo, it's a closet. Phone call. Hey. Huh. Yep, oh, yep. He doesn't have a phone. No one has a phone. It's a whole game. So demons coming back to haunt you, Keith. What? Because Ugh. No, we're not watching the sad scene again. No, thank you. What's this? Oh, they're cold. Lovely. Okay, so we got that. So let's go back. Hello! What happened here? An old video camera appears to be busted. Take it anyway. Two blood stains scattered on the floor. Cupboards. Sun oven. No clock hands or doesn't work. It's... Was. Oh god, what happened there? Okay. Then finally we'll be able to get through this. Thank you. Whoa, what the hell? Magazine from about 10 years ago. Videotape. Drink bottle. Tons of movies, both tapes and DVDs. There's a mixture of old and new movies. Somebody... Walk over the movie posters. A video on DVD player looks for it's something new. So can we play... This on it? Will you take out the tape and play it? Yes, please. Who's that? At last, I finally got a hold of you. Uh oh. Oh dear, heard all over. But what else could I do? You just wouldn't stop running, miss, no matter how much I hurt you. You told her to run. Why would she stop? But ah, uh, well, our game of tags come to a close now. Yes, you can't outrun the scary, scary boogeyman. Are you relieved it's over, or are you still scared? Well, madam, do you want to run? You're an unbelievable idiot. <laughs> Get him, Helena. Helena. Say again. Sit loud and proud. I called you an idiot. You thought I was running because I was scared. You think I'm scared of you? So proud of her. Yeah. Maybe you've spent too long in your little closet world to understand. You've convinced yourself that women and children are all scared of you. What were you planning once you caught me? Kill me? And then what? God, she's so brave. You'd go to kill Keith, right? You told me you had Keith in your hands. Whether he'd live or die was up to me. I guess that was true. And all this time you've been foolishly chasing after me. You could never kill him. That's a really smart thinking. I'm weak. I can't be as strong as Keith is. But there is something I can do in all my weakness. I can distract you so that Keith can burst through the door and kick your ass. If I can keep your attention yeah. away from Keith by running all the time, I'll run to the ends of the earth. Oh, she's so amazing. You poor... Stupid little buggy. 
naughty man. You really are such a child. You just love bullying anyone weaker than you. Go ahead. Have fun in your little world. Call yourself a villain, a monster. But I'll never let you bring my husband into it. Don't you dare lay a hand on him! God, she is the real hero of this story, jeez. Oh dear. You talk too much, madam. No, she was talking right and you just got upset. That's terrible. They look like kids seeing from the TV. Jeez. Didn't laugh. Let's hurry and look for Helena. She must be nearby. Quick, let's go. Oh. Keith? Keith? Keith, what are you doing? We have to hurry. Keith, are you listening? Hey, what are you staring at? Are you asleep? Get a grip! Come on! Come on, Keith. Oh. I'm awake. <laughs> Gee, really? I thought you fell asleep. Honestly. David, you look for Helena. She should be near. Huh? W what about you? W what are you gonna do? I'm going to go kill a monster. Oh, snap. Oh! Oh, we got angry, angry Keith now. Wonderful. Oh, I feel bad for Mr. Boogeyman now. He's gonna get his ass kicked. Look at him. He's actually going faster than he's ever gone before. Oh. Oh, you should have just left her alone, buddy. Is it this way? I don't think there's anything else. Ah! There's only four was left to worry about now. Oh god, not the, s the stairs. Do not press the lever. That, well, that's what I'm remembering. Don't press the lever. Everything should be fine. Time to get this happy ending. Wait, Dad? Oh, hi. Hi, Todd. I wasn't expecting you here. Leave the door open. And don't turn out the lights in the hall. Oh. Why? The boogeyman! The boogeyman will come. No, you won't because your dad will kick his ass. What kind of guy is this boogeyman? He has long nails and kidnaps kids. He lives in the closet. Okay, we put a padlock on the closet. Boogeyman's not going to get you anymore. A kidnapper? Well, can't leave a guy like that on the loose. Alright, that'll give him a good beating. <laughs> Hell yeah! Get him! Hey, Boogie, you in there? What? Hey, let go! <laughs> How to traumatize your kids, one on one. Dad? Run, kid, run! Dad! <laughs> he was a little tough, but I got him good. No worries, <laughs> son. Old Boogie won't come for you anymore. Oh, it's so brilliant. I love it. Really? Would I lie? No. Me and Mom are in the bedroom right there, you know. You still scared? <laughs> oh, need your stuff, Bunny, do you? Or should I read you a bedtime story? Maybe the ones with the fairies. Kids go to bed at 9 o'clock at night. That's a little late, isn't it? No, no way. I'm not a wuss, Dad. I can sleep by myself. Kick him out of the room, Todd. That's the spirit. Listen, Todd, if the boogeyman comes to get you again, Dad'll beat him up. I'm not gonna let anyone mess with you or Mom. Oh, yeah. Cause you're a police officer? No, he's a, I'm a badass police officer. Cause I'm Dad. Good night, son. Also, that reason. Oh, that's so sweet. Should I leave the light on? It's okay. I've got you and Mom. Good night. I love you. Oh, That was worth it. 
I don't care what anything. <laughs> that made it the happy ending for me. Don't blame it on the sunshine. Don't blame it on the moonlight. Yeah, because what have I done? Absolutely nothing. Don't blame it on the good times. I know you're calling it a goddamn song. Why? Blame it on the boogie. <sighs> have you ever thought leaving. about it, detective? Thought you have an enemy. Dude, hiding behind the pillow was not going to save you. Who or what it is, you don't even know. Maybe it doesn't even exist. Maybe it's all in your head. But you know there's something tormenting you. Always making it so, so painful. You feel like the whole world's out to make you suffer. Are you still singing? singing? <laughs> Too troublesome to make an enemy of the whole world, right? So, just making one enemy will do. I should probably get ready for a boss fight. I chose you as my enemy. Have I become yours? Oh well, either way, we're gonna settle this right here. Yeah. Let's end this wonderful game now. <laughs> he pulls out a butcher knife, I pull out a fire axe. Yeah, let's Can you see how it beat goes. this final boss and take back your beloved wife? Probably. <laughs> oh, that's that's creepy from Keith. Oh, that's so funny. Keith, stop. <laughs> Boy, you're really having a blast, huh? What's so funny that you can be all smiles all the time? Total opposite of me. I don't remember the last time I laughed. But I guess we were pretty similar after all. In a sense, it was all a lie. What? You're always grinning ear to ear, but you're scared, aren't you? So you keep running. You can't go head to head with me. You and me are just acting. You're no scary monster, and I'm no paragon of justice. Okay. Final boss? Ha! <laughs> a big baddie should be a pretty sly guy, shouldn't they? But taking hostages, always on the run, the only thing you can chase after is girls' rumps. <laughs> wow. You know, I wasn't planning to do anything with you. As long as the elders were safe, I was fine leaving you be. I'd secure your hostages and scram, then just leave you to the local police. Mm-hmm. Because I'm not chasing you. You just keep running from me. Nice. What I'm really chasing after. Sorry, but it ain't you. That's right. It's not you. You're my enemy. Spare me the sleep talk. Why would I make my enemy a dunce who just sneaks away? <laughs> a coward who hides in the closet and threatens kids. Slay him, chief. Jeez. And your enemy? Not me either. You've got a lot more enemies. If you go to the slammer, you're going to be a real popular guy. I can tell. <laughs> uh oh. But this is a great chance. What on earth is no that? No hostages to get in the way. No one watching. Did you just like break your hand? <laughs> what? So I can do whatever I like with you. Uh, wait, Keith. Oh, wait, Keith. Detective, criminal. That doesn't matter now. You've done the number one thing to get on my bad side. Keith, don't go to prison for murder for this guy, okay? You chased after my wife's rump. Wow, okay. Sure. That alone is enough reason for me to beat you down. Don't you think, Boogie? Where are you going? We're having a boss fight. Get back here. Don't you dare run. I don't. I don't. Can't afford to laugh anymore, can you? What the heck? Back to your closet, boogeyman. You don't have what it takes to make it over here. Okay. <laughs> ah! Okay, he got.
on me! Whoa! I'm at Keith, what the heck? Shift? What does shift mean? Huh. I thought you were supposed to be scary. What? Sorry, you following me a different you following me a What? Oh! Sticky fucking gears! Huh. I thought you were supposed to be scary. Get him! I don't know what I'm doing, but get him! Minus 50 health! So is this just a warm-up practice, or are you actually gonna attack? Attack! Oh, is that it? I was just about to have fun. Damn. So is this just a warm-up practice, or are you actually gonna attack? This is very interesting. Oh, is that it? I was just about to have fun. Huh. And... Slam. I seem to be doing terrible de- And dead. And dead in three hits. Where do you think you're going, Lance? Shelly's like, hugging that axe. I'm gonna find him. They've been gone way too long. Didn't you learn your lesson? With Sophie? Did you forget what he said? It'll be a burden on him to move around on our own. Well, then after all said and done, we'll tell him we did just what he said. Of course, you might have all gone stone cold by that time. Don't joke about things like that. So I was in a boss fight. I was eager to have an epic fight for, you know, a minute or so. I got... What? Sounds like a joke to you? Uh, we got two, maybe three corpses around here. Five to ten. What part of don't, don't you get? Hit him with the axe. Stop, you two. Don't fight. Just hit him with the axe. Problem solved. We'll go search together. Ah, that's... I'll lead the way. Sophie and Shirley, you hold hands. And Lance, you watch the rear. P papa You really want to go? Yes, we'll be all right together. <laughs> that's a good way to and die together. something I'm curious about. What's that? This whole incident may just be a great big farce. What? What do you mean? Let's be going. No, we should explain. You can get to say things like that and not explain. Helena, where are you? Helena! Meanwhile, with David. Huh? I not see it. Oh. Helena! David! Are you okay? Does she look okay? I... That man knocked me out. I woke up here. I was unconscious the whole time. What whole time? We've seen tapes. That sounds creepy as F. Keith! Helena! Helena, no! He's busy killing some guy. Keith! Where are you? Don't dare fall down the stairs. Don't touch that fucking thing. Always lever. on the run, huh? But marijuana addicts can move better than you. Keith is still just. just. Oh. What's in that big head of yours? Apparently it's you. Sorry, what? Brendan? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> wow, I called it and start. Wow, Brendan! Brendan, you're supposed to be dead! Even though I kind of forgot your name, you were dead. And I said, right at the start, that the first person to die often is not dead, and it's actually them. Damn. You lose. What? Don't say that to me. I, I, I kind of like the whole... I don't know. How do I lose, Brendan? Moving on.
Detective. Yeah. Oh. That's, that's not fair. I got the requirements. This was the happy ending. Get him, David! You're Brendan? Why? Punch him! Stop moving around! Keith, Helena! <laughs> Look at the dough holding hands! We have to stop the bleeding. Let's! Richard, help me out! S Sophie, find something to tie him with. Don't press the lever. No. Keith! <laughs> Got you. Yeah. You're gonna die. Keith? You... Helena, when we get home, let's finish our conversation. Could you please start a conversation? No more running. Yes. Talking. No! Keith, stay with me, please! Come on, Keith. Keith, god damn it! Why? What's the ending? I want yes. Yeah, uh, the servants and Stevie. Ten people died, all told. Also called that. I'm sure glad to be alive now. Feeling glad to even have air to breathe. Yeah. But where's Keith? Listen, don't you say a word about all this. Especially not to your co-workers. If it takes money to shut your yap, I'll pay any price. You shouldn't be hanging out bribes. Aren't you like a police officer? Or like a high-ranking police officer? Ho oh, ho ho! Bribery! Where's that money coming from? Call them out, Lance. My own pockets. Listen, you guys can distort the truth all you want, and I won't say a peep. Because that's freedom of the press. Right. But this? This is different. I've got no tolerance for people pointing and laughing at a wounded friend. Dick, you can call it whatever you like. I still hate you. Do I gotta tell you again? I'm not a gossip guy. <laughs> I hate cops, sure. But I hate gossip, too. I won't ask for money, and I won't say a peep, because I'm grateful to the guy. Now quit hounding me. But, as an involved party, I've got a right to know what happened there. Same. I just can't wrap my head around it. I talked to Brendan at dinner. Heard he got tired of the musty old castle and ran to Hollywood. Had a lot of fun in the movie biz. What? So what was the motive? Yeah, good question. Guy's gone silent. Sounds like he convinced you he was a goody two-shoes. But I bet you heard a different story in Hollywood. Now that's the kind of thing your lot should be writing about. Okay, we'll still come back Nobody to Hollywood. Nobody knows people's past, usually. But it's easy to fool you into thinking otherwise with a little acting. And once you know somebody's past, you can lead them by the nose. Great. Right. Inspirational. He tricked you all, and tried to kill you. What a farce. Is that really surprising? Wow, the murderer pretended to be a nice guy so he could lure and capture and kill everybody around him? Shocker. Not sure of the motive yet, but he was pretty systematic about it all. Mm. Spent a ton of cash beforehand to check up on all the tour attendees. Even did a background check on me. I saw it. He had four lines of info on you. On you? Why? Because I was going to be on that tour. Four lines of info. No wonder I thought he knew me. The hell? So he just researched us? Yeah. That's the oldest trick in the book for us. Saying... I know all about you. It makes you superior to the other person, so you can uh, control them. Then they freak out and have to submit. He knew that tactic well. Keith called him out on it. Seeing right through people without any tricks. That's what makes a real monster, ain't it? In his case, he just used money and connections to dig up people's past and played the part of a monster. But the research wasn't to select candidates. So he just picked randomly. Damn, was he just in it for fun? Maybe. Now, my turn to ask questions. 
What you tell me is the only way I can figure out this incident. Give me anything you got. What about Key? First, Brendan, or Bookie Rapper. What kind of man was he? Well, I don't know. Woman, he was a nice guy. Mr. Goody Two Suit, next minute murderer. You tell me which one's real. How should I say it? I suppose he had no emotion. That's how I saw him. Oh, we're getting through all the interviews. Sophie! He said such terrifying things without a care. He hardly showed any human feelings. He really was like a monster. Keith told me he was a real jester. Keith's alive, yay. A jester? Absolutely not. I would have much preferred if he were at least a little silly. He was silly. Did you not see the light show he made at the beginning? He was a very disturbing, terrifying man. He was totally calm as he did awful things. Mm. Richard, you seem to have a suspicion he might be Brendan. Why do you think that? He was the first to die. When my daughter went missing, and I panicked thinking that man might have taken her, Keith told me something. What? This was the kind of person who would show corpses as decoration. So if he did take Sophie, he'd show off proof of it. Meaning she was still safe. Oh yeah. Luckily enough, I didn't see them, but indeed, evidently, there were many dead bodies left around. Yeah, I couldn't show you. I couldn't go anywhere. As Keith said, my daughter hadn't fallen into his grasp. He was correct in his assumption. That made me realize something unusual about what he'd said. What? Keith said he saw the moment Brendan's neck snapped, and his corpse was quickly dropped into the basement. Yes, that's how he died. Isn't that odd? Apparently. Why did he quickly put Brendan's corpse out of sight? Why did he treat him differently from the other victims? Mmm, nice one, Richard. Because he didn't watch you investigating it. He's got some keen insight. I'll give him that. So you suspected this was a farce plotted by Brendan? N no, well, I just... I suggested that since Keith hadn't checked the corpse, he might still be alive. I only wanted to believe there was a chance he was alive. I had no conviction about the rest. Mm. So I didn't speak about it to Keith. I wouldn't dare risk throwing him off with my amateur opinion. Not to mention we didn't know whether his wife was safe. Sophie okay, she not say a word. Apparently, Keith saw the moment Brendan's head came off, actually. Was it a doll? I just don't say that, please. Right, you are. Packed with neat uh. little blood packs, it seems. Brendan was hung upside down and had his mouth taped up, and it was dark enough to be hard to tell who's who. Just dressing him up the same way made Keith assume it was him. On top of all those flashy rave lights, he dropped the corpse down below, so it was impossible to check it closer. <laughs> wave lights, so... <laughs> Jeez, like, there you go, flashy wave lights. This guy did, like, as I said, it was trying way too hard to be scared at the beginning. And since Keith saw the tour conductor killed right after that, of course, he'd think Brendan was killed too. Hmm. Connecting the dots. something. Maybe this could have been resolved sooner. But I was paralyzed with fear. I was only worried about my daughter. We know. It's okay. Even when Keith was running all over the place for us. Don't worry about it. Keith did all that because he wanted to. That's all. He's deeply glad you're all safe. Now, little lady, can we hear from you too? Hear what? Anything. What you thought. What you noticed. <laughs> Come on, Sylvie. Well, I knew he was a fake, because I've met the real boogeyman. Oh, <laughs> out of place, yeah! Sophie, stop it. Not this tale again. Oh. Fine, if you say so, Papa. Guess I'm not saying a word. Go ahead, please. Meeting the real boogeyman sounds pretty juicy. Can you tell me more? Oh, oh buddy. Maybe not really met. He just touched my shoulder, but his hand was cold as ice. Right away, I knew it wasn't human. Mm. That guy's hands were human, though. They had warmth, so I knew he was just a regular guy. That is kind of interesting. These are interesting. Damn, I wanted the Huh. No. So the boogeyman's hands are cold, eh? I'll tell that to my little squirts. <laughs> God, everybody's traumatized in the children's. Anything else you noticed? I feel like you might get angry if I say this. I won't. Tell me. Say it. That guy had this cold and emotionless air. Like you couldn't tell what he was thinking at all. 
You're right, that made me mad, Flip Sable. So what? It reminded me of Mr. Keith a little. That's not the gang we over. You still think that way now? Not even. Because Mr. Keith got really mad at me. <laughs> yeah. He was like, don't worry your papa ever again. Slap. <laughs> Seriously. Red paint? On his face? What? There was nothing like that. It was all red from blood spurts, though. Excuse me, who's the lady? I'm not Shirley, but who's the other lady? Really? Keith told me he had a weird paint on a torn paper bag. Yeah. And one more thing. Did you see any red graffiti in the castle? Or many monsters? Hear any phones ringing? No, I didn't. Wait, that was all hallucin- Like, the phones were definitely hallucinations, but the graffiti room? That was... Whoa, Mr. Keith. Hoover, you're colorblind, if I recall. Maybe you just couldn't see the paint. Is this his partner, Eric? Why are you stepping in, Wilson? Yeah, but it's white and pink I get mixed up. I can see red just fine. Well, uh, and you, miss? Right, if he's... I don't know how colorblindness works, but if you sprayed... Graffiti, red graffiti all over the walls, and you couldn't see red, you'd still, like, not see the colour of it, but you'd still see that something was graffiti there and be able to read it, right? This hasn't gone invisible because it's red, right? You know, like, if you... I don't know how... <laughs> Is that... This is just completely throwing me off. Like, I'm pretty sure if you threw a red cloth over David, he wouldn't see the colour of it, but he'll cert like he wouldn't see the colour red, but he'll certainly know that there's a cloth falling over his head. That's what I'm trying to say, basically. I saw quite a bit of the castle, but none of that. Did you hear that from the others? Don't get me wrong. I don't think you're lying. The others said they saw nothing too. But if it was a hallucination by Keith, then we wouldn't see anything at all. But if it was there, he would see not the red. But then, anyway. that makes Keith the one talking nonsense. Well, maybe because lack of loss of blood, and a very, very stressful week, and then being, you know, kidnapped and threatened by a madman. Maybe he was a little stressed out on soul things. I don't think Keith is necessarily lying. What do you mean? Hallucinations. Come on, man. Because people don't always see the same things you do. What? So I call back to what? <laughs> yeah, same. What? Thanks for the assistance, you two. Sorry about calling you in two weeks after the fact. Yeah, we should have, you know, debriefed you. Got your statement straight away. Is not everything settled yet? The police there are in the middle of their investigation. My role is just to assist. I'm gonna report your testimonies to them, and that's that. Cool, where's Keith? I'll be off now. Eric, take them to the entrance. Where's the protagonist? Come on. Where's the real heroes? When their son oh. died, I thought my own life was over too. What have you got in your head? I could think about anything. Nothing had any taste. But tears would suddenly come anyway. No. I don't remember anything about what I did back then, but I do remember one thing. That Keith no. was always at my side. When I wheeled and shouted, he'd hug me, stroke my hair, say it was okay. Eventually, I adjusted to life without our son. I found I could laugh again. But when I got my own emotions back, I realized Keith had stopped laughing. I had been broken, and so had Keith. Over time, I was able to heal, but he didn't. He was still stuck in the moment of Todd's death. He was always supporting me, so he... 
never faced up to himself. No. I struggled to be at least a little stronger. Next time, I would protect him. Since I wanted him to laugh again. But I couldn't. I... I couldn't repeat anything to Keith. No. And I realized no lies. I was no. a burden on him. No. That would uh, keep him from ever that. walking again. No. So, even if we're far apart, no. as long as he can laugh again, oh, then no. that's the best choice I can make. No. My wife always brings me more milk before I go to bed. And last Farmer's Day, my little squirt tried cooking me a meal. I definitely don't need milk to get to sleep. And the kids cooking, I'll be blunt. It ain't good. <laughs> but, but I'm glad for something. it. Usefulness and collateral don't mean a thing with this stuff. Yeah. Keith didn't stay close to you expecting something in return. That's just what he wanted to do. Yeah. You guys, I've got too much sympathy. You don't mind getting hurt for the sake of the other. <laughs> but can't you notice that one of you being hurt hurts the other? You've just been getting more and more wounded as you go along. You're propping Keith up too, Helena. He can fight day after day, because he knows you're waiting at home, as much as I tease him about it. No. Don't I think of yourself as baggage. Depend on him as much as you need. That's what he wants too. Yeah. I think. Keith grabbed my hand and smiled, even though he was stabbed and wounded. He also laughed before that. And what did he say? He said, I love you. I don't know. Got you. There you go. Same Because he finally got what makes him happiest. <laughs> Stabbed? I don't think that makes anybody happy. But, man, too much discrepancy between your guys' testimonies and Keith's. Just how am I going to report this to their department? Did you ask psychological... Validation on Keith? Hey, Helena. He went back home from the hospital today, right? Can I come talk with him now? He's alive! Yay! Let's go see him! I'm sorry. Before he goes back home, there's a place he's going to visit. And I'm planning to head there myself. Please don't be bad. Please don't be bad. Please don't be bad. Please don't be bad. Where is it? Keith? Hey, buddy. Give him a hug. Keith. Hug him. No. Give him a I hug. I always wanted to cry like this. Hug him. Uh, I never forgot about him. Not for a single day. I don't think you did that. Ever since he died, I was scared. I felt like even the slightest sign of weakness would make it all crumble. I acted like I felt nothing. Like nothing disturbed me. I thought then I might be able to fool everyone. Even myself. It was so stupid. I was broken a long time ago. It was all garbage. But I acted like a champion of justice. It always felt off. Whoever I was working for, I never felt repaid. And I saw you were safe. And you came up to me. Finally, I felt happy again. No... Acting strong just made me weak. It was pointless. Todd would never forgive his father staying broken forever. Because I promised I'd protect his mom. I'll take off the blindfold. I'm gonna laugh. Even if it's at a stupid TV show. If I'm pissed, I'll get mad. And if I'm sad, I'll cry. Mm. Y'all be human! First, I guess they'll have to be counseling. Yes. There's something seriously wrong with my head, seems like. It's gonna be a busy time. Yes, but... You have each other. You pull through. 
and it's going to be so busy. I won't be able to do it alone. No. Helena. Hello. I don't think I can deal with just being a good loser. I want a chance. Let me chase after you. Let me get down on my knees. Uh, what? You're the only one I want waiting for me. There's no need for a chance. Didn't I tell you? Divorce or decide. Oh, yeah, that oh, thing. I've decided. Haven't you too? Hugs. We only ever have one umbrella. So we hold it together. Yay. And it's fine if we get a little wet because. All together? It'll soon be sunny again. Oh, and that too? Happy end, come rain, come shine. Wow, okay, here we go. Yay, happy ending. God, the happy ending's very really sad. This game, man. I love this game series. I love the characters. God, I get sad sometimes. Which makes it amazing. Don't get me wrong, it's not a bad thing to have sad games or to make people feel stuff, but... Man. Man, there we go, happy ending. Got all the ends apart from one and had a bad one, and that was... Handbreaking. <laughs> oh, and having voice acting was pretty... Pretty nice. I know a few people um, <laughs> don't like the voice acting version, but hey, I don't mind. It added something more to it. And uh, no more <laughs> my terrible impressions of them. Oh well. Nah, it's really cool. The Overlord Bear. That's a cool nickname. Cool name. So good. Wow. I don't have to say really. Uh, there's one more game of the series left. I can't remember what it's called exactly. Top of my head. But wow. I guess it's gonna be more like this. What? Uh, oh, I have no idea what I'm gonna do next. How are they gonna top this? Oh, I don't even wanna know. The bad things got worse and worse, so I'm like, oh, what's, uh, what could possibly have next? Jeez. Well, so we'll get into it. Enough. I'm really glad we got the happy the happy ending. Definitely added some, and yes, I'm pretty sure it's the canon ending to all of these. I'm glad I got it. It wasn't too difficult. Just... Just, wow. That was a lot of stuff. Any extras? <laughs> I'm the sheep. Congratulations on beating the boogeyman, and thank you for playing the game. Additionally, so if you have played the previously two games in the series, this game has was fully voice acted with the help of voice actors. Due to the author's fatigue, there are no bonus scenarios. Oh, I'm sorry, author. Oh, but I did receive comments from each of the actors, so hit the upper door if you're interested. The Something Man series has come to a turning point. The general storyline ends in the next game. I have plans for a series and silly extra chapters afterwards, so please play those if you're interested. Lastly, once again, congratulations on beating the game, and thank you for playing. Ah, there you go! I'm the sheep! What? Don't come near me. God damn it, it's him again. No! I said no! 
I hide behind this painting because I don't want to see you. I said no. What's he doing? What's he doing? This ain't your game. Go away. <laughs> Finally got to I can see a look over, I guess. Why are you here? You're still a creeper. Is he still stalking Sophie? I bet he's still stalking Sophie. Well, that was the Boogeyman main game. Check out the extras later on. Deal with whatever. Sandman over there, jeez. No one asked your turn, buddy. Sandman is gone! Sandman is gone. Hooray, he's gone off screen. Wow, okay. I'm leaving here. That was awesome. That was pretty damn awesome. Very scary at times. Um, good story. I like the boys acting. It wasn't amazing. It wasn't top notch. But it was pretty good and, you know, it did, it did the job. Which is to portray... A voice for the characters and to add a bit more motion on it and it did that and hey i don't really mind it and if you really do hate it there is an option uh you know a version of this game without the voice acting so there's really no complaints for me but anyway that is it for today guys so hope you have enjoyed if you have one subscribe for more awesome content i'll see you in the next video Bye -bye.